teams are really underneath the Penske banner, if you will. You had mentioned that Power is running for Russo Dragon with Jay Penske's team. And even though they may work individually to each other, you can rest assured that they've got together down here in the pit boxes to talk to each other to say we need to get together to track down these guys up front. I'm just not sure they have the speed, Eddie, because you mentioned that before. I think Target's got everybody pretty much covered right now, Marty. Well, and I was looking at the amount of time spent in the pits. Guess who's leading in that department? Our race leader, Scott Dixon. Two minutes, 20 seconds so far. And as the race progresses and those numbers keep adding up, it does play a key factor. We'll continue to explore that. As, as we told you, we have at least one more round of pit stops after this. There goes Will Power as he dumps in. And uh, as we take a look at our Apex Brazil clock pits, it's Will Power on the left. And keep an eye on Castro Nevis on the right. He needs a very quick pit stop to try and get out. Here's Will already underway. There goes, oh no, Frankini has a problem. The fuel hose is still connected. So Frankini has a major issue with pit lane and is going to lose a ton of spots. And sometimes that creates a problem in the fuel tank. Even if you get off, you've got to still be leaking fuel. And the other side of that, Eddie, and we talk about a fuel spill. Here we have right now with the 14 car. Look where Tracy's at. He's fourth. Vitor Mira is in trouble there as uh, they had that fire and quickly have extinguished it. And because we saw this for Frank Keating, there might be the same situation here. Everybody is in a hurry to make the fastest pit stop because it's getting close to the end of the race. Remember the video we showed you back at the 1969 race, the late Lloyd Ruby? Pulled out too soon, broke a hole into the fuel cell, and here is what the fire looked like as you can see. That is the ethanol and boy. And you can see the Buckeye over here on the left hand side of the screen and the spring. That is all from the inlet nozzle that goes in to put the fuel into the tank. So no doubt the car was leaving before that had been pulled up completely. Now the process is somebody tells him to go. Let's go to Jack. Guys, we had a lot of fuel. <laughs> the fueler was covered in fuel and he's got some minor burns in his eyes, but Vitor Mira in fast action by the ABC supply crew and the Delphi safety team. They covered the entire car with water. Now, you wouldn't do that with your passenger car, but with ethanol, what it does is it disperses it. And uh, Craig Baranowski is uh, one of the chief mechanics. And Craig, what is the condition of your fueler? We got to get a probe. We get going. The probe is broken, guys, and this is the big problem now. They've sent Vitor back out. They've got to totally replace the probe section before they can even bring them back in. So there's a little bit of bedlam going on down here right now, but everybody seems to be okay. What I want to know is how in the world is he able to even go back out there? I mean, did you see the flames that were wrapped around him? Mirror and stayed on the lead lap. How's that for you? How do you know if he doesn't have burns under his helmet. How do you know if there's in water is still floating around in the cockpit? There's so many things. If any of that water hits an electronic component, the car will stop. All right, so obviously a moment that you just do not want to see happen in the race and take a look. I mean, you would think right now this is serious, and it is, but yet Vitor Mira is back out on the track. Unbelievable. We're at lap here at the 2009 Indianapolis 500 telecast presented by GoDaddy.com. And we are under our sixth caution with a lot of fire.